Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 887 of the Juice Box Podcast. This is quite an episode. I'm going to be speaking with Liz. She is the mother of four children. One of them has type 1 diabetes. Her husband has type 1 diabetes. Her son has a thyroid thing. And she's got a bunch of different stuff that we don't really get to until later in the episode. It's very, very interesting. I wasn't quite sure what to call this this little uh, ditty between me and Liz. So um, even at this moment, I'm not sure what the title is going to be. You'll find out when I do. While you're listening today, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan. If you have type 1 diabetes or are the caregiver of someone with type 1 and you're a U.S. resident, please consider going to t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box and completing their survey. Your completed survey helps type 1 diabetes research to move forward. It may benefit you, and it helps support the podcast. t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. The podcast is also brought to you today by the company where we get Arden's Diabetes Supplies. That company is called U.S. Med, and you can get started with them right now at usmed.com forward slash juice box or by calling 888-721-1514. Getting your supplies does not have to be a hassle. Try U.S. Med. One more sponsor today, CozyEarth.com. My goodness, I am actually wearing... Oh, I'm wearing it all right now. I'm embarrassed. I'm wearing a, I'm always wearing them when I'm doing these ads. Uh, the joggers from Cozy Earth, and I've got the hoodie on today. They're both super soft, very comfortable, and incredibly, uh, I don't know. I'm never too hot or too cold in them. I don't know what to call that. We also have sheets from Cozy Earth, and I'm thinking about maybe ordering the towels. You should uh, check into them as well. See what you think. CozyEarth.com. Oh, by the way, if you make a purchase while you're there, everything on the website is covered by this offer code, JUICEBOX, at checkout, and it will save you 35%. That's right. You can save 35% at checkout at CozyEarth.com with the offer code JUICEBOX. I'm Liz, and I have four kids. Um, I live in Canada, and my oldest son has type 1. He was diagnosed when he was 12 months old, and he's 15 now. And my husband also has type 1. He was diagnosed after our son was. All right. Do you want to hear something bizarre? Yes. As we started to record, which I can probably leave in, you said that you played the violin. Is that right? Yeah. Your yes. Hus- your husband plays trombone. And then somehow yeah. when you said you were from Canada, I was like, they have music in Canada? That's amazing. <laughs> it wasn't like a full thought in my head. It was just sort of like a, oh, no kidding. <laughs> so, I love all your I love all your Canadian jokes whenever there's a Canadian I, guest on. I wish I was joking. <laughs> it's well, it's it's funny because, you know, we we do this new music festival every year in February. Mm-hmm. And a couple of years ago they actually had a con- like, it's, it's really cold here in the winter. It gets like yeah. minus 30, minus 40. And so they had an outdoor concert with like ice instruments. This composer had anyway, written stuff for percussion with ice. And so just, if you were going to say, how do you play your instruments in the ice? Well, it has been done. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, none of that surprises me what you just said. You know what I mean? Because when you're, I mean, if you were stuck in your freezer all day, eventually you would start making sandcastles and the ice cream. There's nothing to do. I mean, what do you, like when you, my brain pictured an iceberg with a person with a trombone standing on it. (laughs) Do I know there are no icebergs in Canada? 
Sure. But that's not the problem for me. The yeah. Pro- yeah. We're just like, we're right in the middle of Canada. So yeah. no Plus, icebergs here, but the, the rivers freeze and Plus, the lakes freeze. I grew up in the eighties too. So basically I have Bob and Doug McKenzie in my head, <laughs> right? I have ice and then the idea that I don't know anywhere except for where I live. So in my mind, you just live in a wasteland. I, I'm amazed. Yeah. I'm amazed there's buildings there. What do you think of that? I'm just, I just. Well, I, I'm, I'm not from Canada. I'm from Washington state. So I'm still, oh, I'm that's still a, not used to the, yeah, the winter. That's adorable. And that's I actually basically have, Canada though, Liz, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I, this, the most ridiculous thing is I have a cold allergy and everyone always says that I'm just you know, joking, but it's true. Like I have, it's this thing called cold urticaria where I get hives in the cold. May I suggest and leaving Canada? What's that? May I suggest leaving oh. Canada? <laughs> I know I should, but it's like, it's where we both have our jobs and, you know, you people have, are good here. You get hives in the cold. Yeah. Consistently or does it come and go over days and over the year? Uh, no, it's pretty consistent. I mean, I, I found out when I was in university, I was in Ottawa and I was walking, there was this big ice storm one year and I was walking across a bridge coming back from a concert. And so I was getting pelted on my face with these ice crystals. And then I got home and I, like my whole face was broken out into hives and I thought it was just an allergy to a new cream I had or something anyway. And then I was getting hives all the time. I didn't know why. And then I finally went to an allergist and he, I, I told him that and he was like, Oh, well, let me do the the cold test on you. So he held an ice cube against my skin and he's like, yep, you're allergic to the cold. All right, Liz, you've said so, so much here. We're never getting to your kid. First of all, <laughs> leave it to a, a doctor. I'm making quotes around doctor in Canada, right? Let me do the, the cold test. He holds an ice cube to you, the cold test. That's not a cold test. You're holding an ice cube on me. And I well, also, actually, I also, th- I was, <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. What do you got to say about that? I was in this, I was in the States. I had come back, I had come back home for the summer or something, winter. I, I can't remember Christmas vacation, something. So to be fair, the allergist was in, in the States. Oh, you know, it's funny when you tell me the allergist was in the States, then I just think we've got meth head doctors all over the place. But <laughs> when it happens in Canada, I think you found a guy who people just go to, you know what I mean? Like he lives in a hut yeah. and he's like, he seems to know what's wrong. My bigger concern here is that you, I don't think you have an allergy to the cold. I think your body is just smarter than everyone else's. And it's really, it's Probably. trying to tell you, why do we live here? You have to move <laughs> South. I'm so highly evolved. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I'm going to go with that. That's what I, listen, um, that's what I would do. You ever your thyroid checked? Um, yeah, it's been a while. Um, I think my doctor just ordered it, but every time I've, I've had it checked, it's been fine. But, um, uh, my, so, uh, my son who has type one, he has hypothyroid. What, um, when you say your, um, your thyroid's fine, what does your TSH come back? Well, I know because, so the last time I got it checked was probably before I heard all your thyroid episodes. So I do want to know for sure, like this next time I will ask her, I'll be more specific. I'm saying I want your thyroid around two or under. Then I want you outside again. We're going to throw ice cubes at you and see if this urticaria comes back. (laughs) But I I mean, I've never heard that with, I mean, I know there's cold sensitivities with, with thyroid, but are there hives that appear? Listen, with the thyroid? only way I know this is because we figured out my son has Hashimoto's because of hives, but it was heat. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, every once, so I would say like the first time I'm exposed to a, like the hot, the first hot day, if my skin is out, you know, like mm-hmm. say like my, like the upper part of my chest or my hands, I will get a little rash from the sun. Liz. So maybe I'm. Go get I your. Know. I think I'm just sense. I'm supposed to live in Washington State, where it's mild and where it's not hot, not cold, and yeah. there's no sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I um I visited once, which you might know from listening to the podcast, and uh, it, it, it took like five days for the mountain to come out, which is gonna forever crack me up that that was the the verbiage they used to describe that it was cloudy. <laughs> Yeah, I think I did hear that. Wait till the mountain comes out. I was like, what are these people talking about? (laughs) (laughs) 
I used to think, so when you hear me speak oddly, a couple of things, I'm from around the Philadelphia area, so I mispronounce words, but also my grandmother was um, Pennsylvania Dutch, which might not be something that most people understand. I don't think I've ever said this on here, but uh, she spoke backwards is the best way I can say it. So the explanation that's very simple is that if you had a fence and there was an animal on the other side of the fence, uh, a cow, and the cow needed hay, and my grandmother was going to direct you to throw the hay over the fence to the cow, she -hmm. would say, throw the cow over the fence some hay. (laughs) And that was just how she spoke. So I don't know why. Maybe she was only a generation removed from people speaking German. I have no idea, right? Yeah, that must be. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's permeated how I speak because I speak backwards constantly. Like when I write a sentence, I finish it and then I go, oh, the second part should have been at the beginning. Right. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Not as ridiculous well, I, as going out in the cold when your body doesn't want you to and then living in, where are you, in the Yukon or something? Would you say the middle of the country? No, we're in we're in Winnipeg. I like how you said no. You're like, no, I don't live in the <laughs> Yukon, you ridiculous person. I live in Winnipeg. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How did you end up in Canada? Is this boy you met from Canada? He is. Um, I ended up going to Ottawa for university. I had gone to Michigan for my last year of high school. It was an arts academy that out in the middle of the woods. Um, <laughs> Just say you were smoking weed. What are you doing in an arts academy <laughs> out in the woods? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. It's called Interlochen Arts Academy, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's just a an art school so there's um there's a summer camp and then there's the the academy so I went for my last year of high school it's basically just like you know violin lessons and orchestra and yeah and you saw Um, his trombone and you were like oh I have to be with this person no I didn't know him then so I ended up going to Ottawa for university and then from there I I got I just ended up getting this job in Thunder Bay, which is a super small town in Northern Ontario. And then he was, he was there. My, he's also from Ontario, but he was there my first year of the orchestra. And then he moved to Winnipeg. And then a couple of years later, then we, then, then we got together and then I moved to Winnipeg. Liz, you tried so hard not to tell me something just then. I don't know what it is, but it's okay. <laughs> You're like, you know, and then and then he was there. Wait, what what yeah, what what yeah. is the then he then? Did he got me pregnant? What are we? No, what are we no, no, okay, no, that was later. Okay. That, that was, was later. That was later. By the way, it sounds like a <laughs> sci-fi movie. You're like, I went from Winnipeg to Thunder Bay. These are not real places. <laughs> like they're just <laughs> they can't, they can't be. It's just all right. Let's get past yeah. this. All right, it's fine. Real quickly, you've seen a sled dog work? I have. I've actually done it in Thunder Bay. Mm-hmm. I yeah. know it. I know I've it. Been on a, I've been mushing or whatever you call it. Mushing? <laughs> I think that's what you call it. It's not that yeah. All right. That can't yeah. be what you call it, but we'll find out I, about that later. I think it is. I think, look, look it up. Mush. It's possible no one cares about Canada more than me, <laughs> and I've never seen it, and I will never see it. Isabel's like, are you ever going to come to Toronto? I'm like, no, my God, no. Oh, you should. You should. I'm sure it's lovely. What am I going to do? I can't get out of this house. You guys want this podcast. This is how it has to be. I die in this room. Listen, do you know yesterday I contacted the hosting company who hosts the files for the podcast? So I pay somebody to keep the files so you guys have access to them, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, um, hey, if I die how do I keep my podcast alive? And the person responded and said, in the event of your passing, have someone contact us and let us know that you've passed away and we will continue to host your podcast for free. And I was like, Oh, that's very nice. Cause then, you know, the pro tips will still be out there. And and anyway, I got, I don't know what happened to me. I got melancholy yesterday and I'm like, what happens if I die? And I didn't ask Google or God. I was, I asked the guy at Libsyn. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's, you know, it's a legacy either, either way. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, you're, 
your podcast is amazing. Oh, thank you. So, all right. I'm getting back to the trombone at some point, but not right now. So the okay. this, this boy that you marry, he has type 1 diabetes? He does, yeah. So he, and he was diagnosed after our son, um, which I feel like probably saved his life. You know, oh, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say bait and switch. I thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, he tricked me into marrying him and then he got diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I was just because he's not one to go to the doctor if he's mm-hmm. feeling sick, you know, like. Oh, I, I see. Know. I see. You think. So I, yeah. I think knowing him, knowing the signs is what made him figure it out. But yeah, it was bizarre. He he hadn't told me that he was even feeling off or sick, but he said that he was, um, I don't know, for the, like the last month or so, he thought that he had something really wrong. Like, I think deep down he knew it was diabetes, but, you know, part of, partly he was thinking he had cancer or something, you know, mm-hmm. and then, <clears throat> excuse me. So the first I new inkling that there was anything wrong is he'd taken a nap in the afternoon and he, he got up and he's like, I think I'm going to test my blood sugar. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird, you know? And he said he knew as he was waiting for the beat, you know, for the number to show up, he's like, for sure, I'm going to have it. And it was like 24 or something. Yeah. It so. does seem like it takes longer when your blood sugar is higher, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was probably, you know, one of those old meters too. Right. Um, but um, I know that's not actually accurate, but it feels like it. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. no, gonna I know. Hard. Yeah. Um, okay. So wait, your son's diagnosed at 12 months. He's 12 your 12 months. And he's your first child. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And you yeah. Still and that three his, more. Okay. Yeah. And his story, I mean, that was one of the reasons, um, like he has an interesting, I guess, interesting diagnosis story. So, um, at four months old, uh, he started being followed by uh, um, uh, oh, missed my brain. Um, Moose and squirrel. <laughs> I just literally lost all my all my words. Um, it's okay. Take do you uh, hey, a neuro- not a neurologist, but a um, uh, like a brain <laughs> surgeon. What's <laughs> Something that I need, apparently. Liz, I have um, to tell you, I know what your son has, and I feel terrible laughing about this right now. So, <laughs> no, I know you're laughing at me. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. uh, the guy from Let's start over. The guy from Grey's Anatomy, who's married to Meredith Grey, who eventually dies yes. in a car accident. He was a neurosurgeon. Is that correct? Yes, neurosurgeon. Is That's that, what I was trying to say. Is that yes. who was is was following your son since he was four months yes. old? Yes. Yes. Thank it. you. No problem. Um. So anyway, um, yeah, because his head was his head was growing at an alarming rate for a baby that four months old, mm-hmm. and um, so anyway, they, they the diagnosis was he has hydrocephalus and it, which is extra water, extra fluid around the brain, and it's dangerous because if if there's a blockage and the fluid can't freely you know go up the spinal cord up and down. Um, then it will create pressure on the brain and um, he'd need emergency surgery to get a, a shunt put in and he would basically have that for life. And so it was, you know, sort of stressful having, you know, your first kid and they gave us this long list of side effects that we had to watch out for um, that would clue us in that he would need to have emergency surgery. And so it was, you know, extreme fussiness, lethargy, vomiting, all these, all these things. And so, so many of them overlapped with um, the diabetes. So that's, that's how we missed, we missed the diabetes diagnosis for as long as we did. But um, how long do you think you, you didn't say it? I feel like he was, he was definitely sick the month before his birthday. Um, And then it was, it was a pretty, I mean, it was kind of probably slow at first the, the decline, but then the last couple of weeks, you know, it was obvious there was really something wrong with them, but, uh, um, yeah, it was super stressful because, you know, he was, he was a fussy, fussy baby. And so every time he would cry, I was like, is this his head? You know, is this, and then we, he also had undiagnosed food allergies. And so that was making him 
sort of spit up his food all the time and throw up all the time, but we didn't know that he was allergic to food. Um, so he has like peanut, tree nut, um, egg allergy. So probably, and I was breastfeeding. So probably every time I was eating nuts or eggs, it was creating this issue in him. But um, yeah, anyway, so at around, I don't know, I'd say the month before his birthday, he started to get a little sick and it was flu, like he's born in November. So it was sort of, you know, flu season, cold season. And at that point he was, you know, he was a pretty happy baby aside from, you know, bouts of, bouts of fussiness, but, um, you know, he was walking and not walking, but crawling, cruising along furniture, you know, holding onto stuff and, Mm -hmm. and crawling all over the place, you know, pretty active. And then as he sort of, as he got sicker, he just basically stopped doing everything. Like he would sit on the floor I I give him some toys and he kind of like half-heartedly play with his toys and he was extra fussy sleeping more. And so I was calling into his doctor. I was like, you know, there's something wrong with him. And he's like, well, he has, his doctor is great. Like he, he was calling actually to check on him, but he was like, he has an appointment in, in I think it was two weeks. Um, uh, So uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Let me back up. So You're fine. we did bring it when he started to, to sort of show these signs, we brought him in and they did a CAT scan on him and they're like, well, there's no change with the, the fluid. So his head's okay right now. Um, just keep a watch on him. And so we brought him home and, and then he started to get worse. And his doctor was like, well, it's flu season. Unless he has a fever, don't bring him in, make sure he's getting lots of fluids, lots of fluids. So I was pushing the fluids. And of course he was drinking a ton and um like it was it was so bad so i would have to put him in his diet like for night i would put him in his diaper a regular diaper and then i would put a cloth diaper and a and another like a cloth cover over like a waterproof cover and he would still leak through those but yeah. <laughs> i was like well i'm pushing lots of fluids yeah. and i had also um so i was breastfeeding still but i was giving him um uh formula a little bit of formula, and then I switched to cow's milk right around. Ooh, Liz. Liz. I did the formula. Liz, and I'm then so sorry, you disappeared. He really likes cow's milk, so can that's why he's drinking so much, and that's why he's wetting his diaper. So anyway, so can, it was... Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you blanked out for a minute, so I lost you oh. after cow's milk, and then... Oh, sorry. No, don't be sorry. Okay. You um, switched him to cow's milk. Cow's milk, yeah. So he was... He was drink he was just downing these bottles and i thought it was just he liked the cow's milk better than he liked your the milk. formula oh wow. so yeah yeah i mean he was still i was still breastfeeding too but you know sometimes i give him a bottle of formula and but he would only you know anyway All so right. before it, we move like on the diapers before we move on can i can i um stop to congratulate myself mm-hmm. for a second earlier i didn't ask you how often you had nuts in your mouth and um <laughs> I was really proud of myself. I wrote it down. Good as job. A note. I wrote down. I wrote down nuts, and I put a check mark next to it, like I did something good. You need a gold star for that one. I mean, I really do. I just, you have no yeah. idea how um, hard it is for me to rein in my stupidity, so that we can make this whole podcast together. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're like, before you go on, I thought you were going to tell me to adjust my mic or something. No, I just really wanted to let you know about that. Yeah. Uh, plus, we need to break up the story a little bit because it's um it's a lot, and I want to make sure people have time to take it in. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, hydrocephalus, the swelling on the brain, not a curable uh, issue, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we were, we were expecting that we, he was going to have to have emergency brain surgery at any moment, you know? Okay. And so we had brought him in for the CAT scan and that was fine. And then over the next two weeks, he was like in a, like a deep dive decline. And right. I was calling his doctor. I was like, should I bring him in? He's like, no, 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 just keep giving him fluids. So anyway, we woke up one morning and he was like, just completely limp. Like he couldn't support himself. His legs were just floppy. And, um, he was, he, he was panting. He was doing that panting breath. I was like, okay, we have to rush him in. 
And as we're packing up the diaper bag, he was, he just sort of projectile vomiting all over the place. And we're, so in our, in our minds, we're like, okay, he's, he needs a surgery. And so we rush him in, we give them the rundown of what's happening. And they're like, okay, we're calling, we're assembling the team. We're assembling the surgery team. Uh, we're going to give him another CAT scan and then, then rush him into surgery. And I was like, he just had a CAT scan two weeks ago. Is there another test that we're missing? Should he have a blood test? We have to hurry. The te- they just kept saying the team's assembling. And, and uh, so finally I was like, just, just give him a blood test. I, I don't know what we were looking for, but I was like, there's something, you know? And so the senior doctor came in, he's like, okay, well, I ordered the blood tests and it came back that he has type one diabetes. And we're going to say his head is fine based on that last CAT scan. So Hmm. we've put him on a glucose drip and an insulin drip. And this is what, so they rushed him up to uh, the, the pediatric um, ICU unit. And he, so he was there, he was in DKA and he was there for a couple of days and they switched him over to the, the regular, the regular ward. Wow, Liz, when they were assembling the super friends, it turns out you were actually Superman. How about that? Yeah, I was, I know, but, and I don't know what I was looking for, but I was just like, it's just so weird that two weeks ago, his head was totally fine and, you know, not, not totally suddenly, fine, but, but just no yeah, change, right? It seems this so, bad in just two weeks. Gosh, yeah. I wonder and, what would have happened to him if they would have put him under in DK. I know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah some, you know, I feel like, because he was, he was doing that panting thing and they said, they were like, he was hours away from going into a coma. And mm-hmm. yeah, so it was so scary. Like just the thought of, you know, had it been overnight, you know? No, I understand. It's yeah. it's crazy. It really is. Yeah. Uh, okay. So do the, do the two issues ever, do they exasperate each other? Exact. Uh Oh, exact. Where's the word I want? Do they make each other worse or do they not intersect? diabetes and the hydrocephalus oh sorry uh we cut out there for a second but were you saying do the two issues ever um crossover yeah I'm, yeah um, i'm actually listen i'm getting a, a a weak signal thing from you once in a while but that's fair because you live in winnipeg so yeah it's, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's probably my house sometimes sometimes the, the wi-fi is weird in my the house, house itself but, you think it's yeah like i live in this old this neighborhood with lots of old like hundred year old houses and I don't know what they're made out of, but if I'm making a call on my cell phone, there's only a few places I can actually oh, get a call out. Okay. It's stand weird. stand at that place while we're talking. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So do <laughs> do they well at first you missed me? Oh my God. Now we're gonna have to start over. Hold on a second. I tried oh, to sorry. use a we, I tried to use a word that I know what it means, but could not pronounce. So exacerbate. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Exacerbate. How come I can say it now? Okay. Anyway, I was I reached for that word, couldn't find it. Then you couldn't hear me. Um, is, so do they intersect with each other ever or no? No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, um, they basically, after a year, they cut us off from, I mean, he released us from his care. He said, the only time you would need to see me in the future is if if he gets like a head injury. I'm going to tell you about one of the better decisions I made last year. I switched Arden's delivery of her diabetes supplies from where we were getting them to U.S. Med. And U.S. Med is more than edging out the service that we were getting from that previous company. Right from the comfort of your home or office, you can join over 1 million satisfied customers who rely on U.S. Med for courteous, knowledgeable, and trained customer care. And their representatives are going to keep you up to date with your medical and diabetic supplies all delivered right to your door. usmed.com forward slash juice box or call 888-721-1514 to get your free benefits check right now. US Med features a litany of things that you're going to love. How about an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau? They accept Medicare nationwide and over 800 private insurers. They carry everything from insulin pumps and diabetes testing supplies to the latest CGMs like the Freestyle Libre 3, the Dexcom G6, and a little bird told me the Dexcom G7 coming very soon. 
They always provide you with 90 days worth of supplies and fast and free shipping. Better service and better care is what you're going to get when you go to usmed.com forward slash juice box. On top of all of this, US Med is now dispensing Novolog Insulin Aspart and Humalog Insulin Lispro through their pharmacy benefits. What are you waiting for? USmed.com forward slash juice box 888-721-1514. US Med is the number one distributor for Freestyle Libre Systems nationwide. They are the number one specialty distributor for Omnipod Dash. They are the place we got Arden's Omnipod 5s from. U.S. Med provides Arden with her Dexcom supplies. And they're the number one fastest growing tandem distributor nationwide. I mean, I guess I could say it again, but are you just already online getting it done? Are you even listening to me anymore? Or have you already called 888-721-1514? Don't like the phone? USmed.com forward slash juice box. The other day I got an email from U.S. Med and it said, are you, uh, you want some more supplies? Uh, I guess it was time. And I said, yes, I clicked the button and then they just showed up. You want to do it like that? It's pretty damn easy. USmed.com forward slash juice box. All right, let's talk a little more about Cozy Earth. Dot com. Women's and men's apparel. Great stuff for sleeping, pajamas, bed sheets, blankets. Wonderful, wonderful, soft, made of viscose bamboo or linen. Your decision, you pick when you get there. Like I said, I'm wearing the joggers, which are, I, I don't, I want to curse when I'm talking about them. They're f-ing awesome. I mean, so soft and comfortable, hard to put into words, honestly. Last week, I took off my bamboo sheets and washed them. They look terrific. They're going back on tonight. Absolutely silky, soft, comfortable, keep you at exactly the right temperature. And of course, Cozy Earth has been on Oprah's best, like, what is that list Oprah puts out? Oh, uh, Oprah's favorite things. You know this list. Five years in a row, an item from CozyEarth.com has been one of Oprah's favorite things. And you can get 35% off of all of this stuff and more, whatever you can find on the website, with the offer code JUICEBOX. Just pop it in and check out. JUICEBOX is all one word. uh, And you're on your way to saving 35%. I don't know if you're getting the joggers or the towels or the sheets or the blankets or the pajamas, but whatever you get, it's going to be soft. It's going to be comfortable. And it's going to be 35% off. CozyEarth.com. I'm going to get you back into the show. Before I do, I want to let you know that Liz's son and husband have both had seizures from low blood sugars, and we're going to be speaking about them, so get ready. Nothing crazy. I just wanted to let you know. All right, let's get back to the show. He would have more likely a likelihood of bleeding on the brain, I think, oh. if he were to get a head injury. But um, yeah, so his, head's been, his head has been fine. And two months after that was when we found out that he had all those food allergies. Right. So. So his head's been fine. You you kicked out for a second. And um, oh, sorry. No, no. And I I'm wondering, like visually looking at him since then, you don't look and see that his head appears different. No, I mean when he was a baby, it for sure looked large. Um, and he, I feel like he would say he's. He feels like his head is big, but you know, he's definitely grown into it. It, It's, it looks, he looks normal and fine. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably something he might be self-conscious about, but with, you know, we all have our little things. Listen, I don't have hydrocephalus, Liz, but my head is huge. My head is like seven and seven eighths. Sometimes I see a photo of myself and I'm like, what in the hell? You know, like, why is it so big? (laughs) And meanwhile, I don't, I'm sure, I mean, you know what I mean? Like seven and seven eighths, seven and eighth, like seven and eighth is a small hat. Like it's not, you know what I mean? It's not that big or not that much bigger. Uh, But I'm okay. So it's something he's aware of. Does it impact his life at all? No, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. No, it's, yeah, it's just kind of something that he had when he was a baby and he doesn't, I wouldn't say that he puts any thought into it. No. Mm -hmm. 
if he would have needed the shunt, would that have changed his life significantly? I mean, it could have. I mean, I think it's one of those things where they can get infected and you can, you have to have them replaced later, Mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, it would have its risks for sure. Um, Okay. I mean, I think those, I think those neurosurgeons are amazing and they probably, you know, could do those surgeries. Yeah. It's fascinating. Like, I mean, yeah. it's such a rare thing. I looked it up when we were talking about it. It's like 200,000 people a year are diagnosed with it, which is such a small number, you know? Yeah. And they never knew if it, with him, if it was um, him just having an overproduction of fluid or if there was actually something blocking it. But they said the only way to know would be to go in and do surgery to explore. And they they didn't want to do that. So. Okay. 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 And it could have it could have happened um, just as he was developing in the womb, or it could have happened like we had. I had kind of a crazy birth with him as well. Like he ended up having forceps, and it was a it was a bad delivery. But so it could have been something from that, or it could have just been I don't know, genetic or something. I see. They but, they they were still using forceps fifteen years ago. Well, the doctor that I had apparently, I mean, he was an old school old school OBGYN. And he was, he was one of the, the doctors that you, if you had him and you had a C-section, it was because there was something terribly, terribly wrong. Like he, he was one of the the few people that would still use forceps. I can get it out like that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I I think because, you know, so many, like a lot of people don't do that anymore, you know, because it's, it comes with its risks, but yeah. Mm. Oh, he was apparently a gifted forcep doctor. <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> Jesus. Can you imagine? But well, that's a hell of a Yelp review. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, again, I guess I have to say to you, please just, why don't you just leave Canada? There's so many, there's so many things <laughs> trying to tell you to leave. Yeah. I know. Well, I did switch to midwives after that. Cause I was like, that was, that was pretty good. Just a bear. You know what I mean? Like whatever, <laughs> like, like anybody except the guy with the salad tongs. Who's like, don't worry. This used to work in the forties. <laughs> <laughs> and it works today. Come here. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, our, uh, Kelly's OB had zero personality. And the take on him from everybody in town was he'll get the baby out. Everything will be fine. It's going to be a smooth procedure, but he's going to appear to be mean for nine months while you're talking to him. <laughs> he just, he was just without any kind of bedside manner at all. To yeah. Speak it's yeah. I mean, so sorry to no. like this guy was he was super um he was abrupt as well like he was this old irish guy and he was he was lovely but he was just so busy like he would go up north and deliver babies up up north and he was always just like racing from one birth to another you know so he mm-hmm. he never he wouldn't sit and like hold your hand and say how are you doing how are you getting along you know mm-hmm. um but then I like years later, we ended up having um, a stillbirth and he was my, he was, it was considered high risk um, to deliver that. And he, he was assigned to me. And during that experience, he was completely different doctor. So it was very interesting to see him change, you know, like when, when he needed to. What do you pay him in like jerky and maple syrup? Like, is that how that works? (laughs) You're like here, you like send him home on his like yeah, yeah, his snowmobile yeah. with a bunch of stuff after you like he's like rips the baby, he's like, Here you go, take this. And you're like, Oh, thank yeah. you. Take our maple syrup, eh? And then he leaves. Yeah, yeah I know. Don't worry. That's it. I understand what's going on. Also, your your healthcare system, I'm mad at right now. Um, because I know somebody who needs a procedure and it's it's a simple thing and it's taking forever. And mm. uh and so I'm mad at Canada right now. I'm having my own personal you know, thing, right? <laughs> no one knows yeah, about it, but me. It can take, but, yeah. it can take a while for sure. Yeah. It's get. interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm so sorry. So you had, uh, your son, then the stillbirth was next. No. So I had, uh, my son and then two and a half years later, we had another boy and then two and a half years later, a girl. Mm-hmm. And then a year and a half later was our stillbirth. And then, um, so my youngest is four years younger than my daughter. I see. I have to tell you, you really wanted more kids because that story between the hydrocephalus and the, the diabetes, 
I don't know how you did it again. Like that. I know. <laughs> I know. Seriously. Lots of people have said that. Like, why did you, why did you have more? But honestly, you know, all the babies after him felt so easy because there was, <laughs> right. you know, my, my second baby was like, well, you're crying because you're hungry or tired and you're just, you're not sick. So I, right. the amount of stress that was lifted after, you know, knowing that they're, they're healthy. Right. So, so he gets type one um, in this incredible scenario. How long was he in the hospital? I feel like it was only about three, three days or four days. I mean, he was in the the ICU for two, and then they moved him up to the regular room. And then we had, you know, like the sort of weekend of of training on, you know, learning everything. And what did they do F- fifteen years ago? Winnipeg sliding scale. No, no, they they did talk about that, but I mean they kind of brushed over that. But um, we just we we were on MDI right away, and um, they put him on Humalog and Lantus. So I mean, okay. I feel lucky that they gave us that because knowing what they still are doing yeah, sometimes. Different province could have been a different situation. Well, yeah, and even this province. I mean, kids now being diagnosed are sometimes put on put on like the, they're still giving the them stuff. like regular and MPH sometimes. Yeah. Right? I think yeah. it's for school, school age kids, like the younger ones, because they have no, uh, there's no school nurses here and there's no way to, for the, the school staff to administer insulin. So I think that's, that's the way they think the, about it, the way they get around it. But. Interesting. Um, Oh, okay. Right. They did mention. So when we switched, we got him onto a pump when he was five and that was what they gave us that option. Um, they were like, well, if, if, if you don't go on a, I think, no, I think it was like, if, if he's not able, if he's too young, you know, to administer the, the pump by himself, one thing we could do is take him off the pump and put him on this like two shots a day. And I was like, no, no way. <laughs> we're not, we're not doing that. So what we ended up with doing was um, we, we, started him in kindergarten a year later so we pushed him back a year so he would be so the thinking was like by the time he starts grade one full days he'll be older and more mature able to help himself (laughs) yeah (laughs) more mature yeah he's 15 Um, is he mature yet let me ask you no (laughs) not yet it's coming yeah sometimes sometimes not as much as he was in grade one but no he is (laughs) (laughs) so so what is it like raising a, a 12 month old with diabetes. Like what, what was that like back then? I mean, how much insulin could you have possibly been giving him? It was so small. Um, I remember doing, cause we were on the, they didn't have the pens. We were doing the, the syringes and all right. We had the half unit syringes, but I would do, I would try to ballpark quarter units all the time, you know, like you just yeah. like barely pull it up and um, you know, it was, yeah, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, the breastfeeding was good. And uh, like it was, a, if he was low, I remember breastfeeding him, but I was always wondering like, you know, did I give him too much or does he need like fed for a long time? Should I, you know, does he need insulin for that? Like, it was just so, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was awful. And how did you, there's just meters, right? So you were testing with them. Yeah, meter? just meters. And um, yeah, he was just, I just remember him being high all the time. I I remember I went in for one appointment and I was saying, um, I think they must have asked like what his blood sugars were when he goes to bed. And I, I remember saying, well, I don't feel comfortable putting him to sleep unless he's 15 or above. And they're like, well, that's a little high, you know? And I was like, well, if if he's lower than that, he just crashes in the night and then he's, he's really low. So it's like, I was purposely like making him be 15 before bed. And like, I just, I cringe when I think back, like all the years of him being so high all the high time when he was but, younger. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I pulled out my conversion calculator available at juiceboxpodcast.com and 15 is an average blood sugar of 270. Yeah. 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 So that was, <laughs> that was what I was aiming for in the early days, just because probably he was taking like, you know, one unit of glargine or something and it was too much or, mm-hmm. you know, his, 
When did that begin yeah. to change? Um, I can't remember when he started using sort of a more normal amount of insulin. I mean, those early days, I remember a long time of him just being on like say two units or two and a half units of, of long acting. And mm. then like a half unit for a meal here and there. Um, I've, everything is in such a blur. I, I feel like I've lost years of my <laughs> years of my memory, <laughs> either through self-preservation or just lack of sleep or I don't know. So I feel like there's details that I can't remember, but um, he got us, he got onto a pump when he was five and then he didn't start a CGM until he was nine. And I don't know how we did that being on a pump without a CGM. Mm. Like those, those years were pretty, awful too like he was just he's always he's always been very swinging up and down like fluctuating blood sugars and he had he had um he had seizures too like from the time uh i'd say his first seizure was he he was 18 months old and he had sort of a handful of them in those early days seizures from low blood sugars yeah okay yeah um they would mostly happen during like say he had an afternoon nap, that was when he'd be waking up from his afternoon nap. And that's when it would happen. Like say he'd been super active in the day and then had a nap and then. Yeah. I think it was yeah. too much insulin and then he dropped yeah. and there's yeah. no way to know he's dropping. And uh, I've seen yeah. a couple of seizures. They're, uh, they're pretty frightening. So yeah, they're yeah. horrible. They're horrible. And I feel, I don't know if it's just something with, how I process them, but I, I sort of, I don't know. I, I, it's like my brain plays the movie of them over and over in my head. You know, I think um, I had jumped onto one of your calls maybe a year, almost a year ago. Like you had one of those big zoom calls yeah. and I had just like, you had been like a month of three seizures in our house. Like miles, had had two and my husband had had one like right after my son. And so it was like frazzled and fried. I was like, how do I, how do I stop thinking about these seizures? But right. Well, they're frightening because I mean, you know, they call them low blood glucose incidences. So I, I think they're trying to make it sound better for you, but I mean, it's your, you know, your brain's running out of sugar and it's, mm-hmm. that's the, that's the, that's the fuel your brain runs on. So too much and you have all these other problems and too little and you shut off and it's not the kind of shut off where you turn back on. So you, um, you know, when someone's with you, they can help you. And, but it's hard for you, I imagine not to imagine your husband or your son being on their own or by themselves or someone doesn't notice. And, and then their story. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with the thing that's scary with my son is, he's had a number of them where his blood sugar has been like say 3.6, which is not crazy low. I mean, he's, he's been much lower and not had seizures, but then he's also been lower and had seizures. So I, you know, that thing that you always say, like, trust what you know is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't, I can't do that. And I get so anxious. Like just last night he was, he dropped down to um, 2.8. And my I, I get super anxious if he's below a four because I'm like a four going down could, could like be, uh, this is when he's had the seizures before. Yeah. Yeah. So, so two, yeah. if I say trust what I know is going to happen, I could like base it off of, well, he's going to have a seizure because <laughs> yeah, be, that's happened before. At 65. And you think it's happened. Well, now, in, fa- in fairness, are you saying 65 on a CGM or are you finger sticking and seeing a 65? Both. I've oh, done yeah. it where the, the CGM, you know, said, uh, so 3.6 is 65. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the CGM has said that, but it has been on a downward trend. So most likely he is below that, but then also I've done it with the finger stick. He's, he's been, why is he falling so quickly at low numbers? I don't know. Uh, it was probably just a miscalculation on, you know, Maybe he, sometimes he forgets to pump, he forgets to enter um, his carbs. And so he'll, um, 
you know, the, the insulin is probably working faster than the food and, or miscalculating or being more active or, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's always one of those things where it's like the little things all add up to make that perfect storm. Yeah, no, I know. But, uh, but he's, he's looping, which I am so thankful for because I feel like it saves him so much. How's that? Last night. Yeah. How's that going? Sorry. I was just going to ask how it's going. It's great. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, because last night when he he was dropping, he his basal had already cut off for an hour before, mm-hmm. so it was sort of it's just the safety net, right? Yeah, no, I mean it's a huge help. Obviously, it's and and it, and if you mess up so big, I mean, listen, nothing's perfect, right? You could screw up in a way that 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 the algorithm couldn't help you from, but it's I I I think ninety nine point nine percent of the time. It, it grabs Arden at, at the very least in the fifties, the mid fifties as, as she's trying to get low, but it, you know, it's, I've seen it not be able to help too. You look up and later see that, you know, it had been taking basil away for hours and it still couldn't stop the low, which, right. you know, is where you have to come in, but he's 15. It's a tough age. I would imagine, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah, he's 50. He's a, sort of a night owl and, so we were joking <laughs> last night. He did a carb, <laughs> a carb test at two in the morning, carb ratio test. Like <laughs> that's why, <laughs> that's why he went low last night. I was like, okay, well, I guess thanks for that. Now I know I need to adjust your carb ratio for two in the morning for the next time you go snacking. Um, Whole generation <laughs> of kids that don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, if half my problems are that Arden is like at 11 o'clock, She's like, oh, you know, I'm going to have a snack. I'm like, please I don't. Know. Like, please, just go to bed. What if you just went to bed? It, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's so, so hard. I, and, you know, he's, for the most part, he does so great about, you know, doing all this stuff. And, but he just, he forgets to, I'm like, I see that rise. I'm like, what did you eat at 345? I can see it. He's like, oh, nothing. And then he was like, oh, right. I had six pieces of bread. I'm like, <laughs> 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 anything on it like, no just bread i ate it like I, I squeezed it up into a ball and then chewed on it yeah. <laughs> great thanks yeah. yeah so i'll be i'll be chasing that for the next while but no i mean he's he's got a lot to, to think about and he's he's for the most part good but. doing good yeah I, I I just love that you said six pieces of bread. I don't know why. Because yeah. part of me thinks you just randomly made it up because it sounds ridiculous. And part of me thinks it happened. And yeah. So I, that might have been it. like four pieces. Yeah. I, I, should, I overshot that by two. <laughs> <laughs> just reaching into the wonder bag yeah. and just pulling out bread. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How do you guys even get bread there? They must well, fly I make, it in. I make bread. Oh, you, I make yeah, bread okay. a lot. I'm on a big sourdough kick. But, um, I see. Yeah, we do have grocery stores. No, stop it. They have they have staples. <laughs> How did you listen? <laughs> this I have a number of questions here. First of all, do you guys make a living playing instruments? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise for two musicians to to get together, but no. It's yeah, we do. We're very lucky that we're both, you know, we're doing what what we love to do and it's it's hard to get a job in an orchestra you know and then the fact that we both were able to get a job in the same orchestra it's pretty cool oh wow so you do you play regularly somewhere and Mm -hmm. excellent yeah yeah we both play in the symphony gotcha oh that's lovely and where where who, who watches these children since you're both working at the same time in the evenings well i mean now they're all you know miles is 15 and our older our other son is 13 and our our daughter who's 10 is probably more immature than all of them together so um yeah it's it's fine but it was yeah it was very expensive for the years they were little. The, yeah 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 so we'd have to pay for um a babysitter to come to the house and then for the daytime rehearsals and then we'd have evening rehearsals and then weekend days and weekend even so it was yeah it was a lot hmm. do you have to pay a hydrocephalus tax when you get a babysitter are they like yeah i'm gonna <laughs> be pushing that up 20 percent here or like a diabetes tax how do you find a babysitter that can help you with a diabetic infant you know it was 
we were pretty lucky. Like we somehow we found, we found great people. And I remember, I remember interviewing a bunch of people and I would go through the whole, you know, cause like you have to show them how to use an EpiPen and talk about all the allergies and then, you know, all the, the diabetes stuff. And there was, there was only one girl who was like, this is too much for me. I don't feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, I commended her for, you know, being open and honest about that because it would be a lot for, but most everybody else was like, okay, just show me what to do. And yeah. That girl so was had- Pam Anderson. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> you're like, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, she came on her dog sled. No, right. Um, yeah. yeah. So we, yeah, we've we've had great babysitters, and we had. If you want to hear a crazy um, seizure story, like this was, the, I still have huge amounts of guilt over this. So the one, so our son was six, and we'd had sort of a basically a full-time nanny that was like the full babysitter Mm -hmm. and she was so great like she she would do his sight changes like no problem she she had a great sense of you know just managing his diabetes so we'd had her for a year and the orchestra was going out of town for three days to Ottawa and like we went back and forth for a long time. We're like, can we do it? Can we do it? Maybe one of us should go. And we're like, you know, she's, she's good and we trust her and it'll be fine. And, um, so we were, everything was good. We were in Ottawa and excuse me, the last, the last day we had our, our concert. So we both spoke to her, uh, backstage and she's like, oh, yeah, everything's great. You know, the kids just had a big dinner and, you know, we're just going to play and then go to bed. So everything was fine. So we turned our phones off to go on stage because, you know, you can't have your ringers on. We play our concert and then both of us just forgot to turn our ringers on and we didn't check in with her because everybody was asleep, you know, and like we both forgot to turn our ringers on anyway. The next morning, we get a phone call from the front desk in the hotel, and they're like, we're connecting you to um, someone. And it was our babysitter in tears. And she's like, I've been trying to reach you all night. Miles has had a seizure, and the ambulance is here. Like, she was just so frantic. Mm -hmm. And so what had happened was after, after the dinner, he, I don't know if he'd picked up the stomach flu or if he'd just eaten too much, whatever. So anyway, he'd had a huge amount of insulin, huge amount of food, and then he threw it all up and then he couldn't, he didn't want to take in any more carbs and she couldn't get him to eat or drink anything. How, and how old was he then? I'm sorry. He was six. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, she was amazing. She gave him, she's like, well, you're not eating. I need to give you this shot. So she gave him the glucagon. And she wasn't sure if it all went in or not. And, and, or maybe she just felt like she needed to take him in. So she called her dad over to, to watch my other son and she drove him to the hospital and, um, they, they put him, she's like, he needs to be put on a glucose strip because he has all this insulin in him and no food, Mm -hmm. please put him on a glucose strip. And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. They will give him some gravel because he was throwing up and they're like, just, it's okay. He's good. He's stable. Just take him home and just make sure you test his blood sugar every three hours. <laughs> and she, was, she was like, she was begging them to, to do something, you wow. know? So anyway, so she, she took him home and she tested him. Luckily she tested him every, she was testing him like every 20 minutes or something. But by this point she was exhausted and tired and, um, she woke up at five in the morning to him seizing and then she called the ambulance. And then that's, that's when we got the phone call. How old was this girl? uh, She was, I feel like she was 24. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She She was, she was great. And then, so 
we were we were speaking to the paramedics and they're like, well, his his blood sugar is, I think, six or seven or something. He's six and he's stable. Do you want us to transport him to the hospital? And we're like, well, no, I mean, he's we feel comfortable with him home with with her there. Right. And um, anyway, so we hung up the phone and we're getting and we're like, OK, just check in with us. Keep testing him. So she was giving us updates, you know, and then we're getting on the plane to come back and we're like, just checking in. We just have to turn our phones off. How's everything going? And she was freaking out. She's like, he's in another seizure. He's been seizing for 15 minutes. I don't know what to do. And she was at this point, she was frantic. And so we're like, I was asking, I'm like, have you called the ambulance? And I couldn't understand anything she was saying. She was just, yeah. And so I ended up calling the ambulance from the plane in Ottawa and then they dispatched it to Winnipeg and they're like, okay, we've sent it. We've sent the ambulance. And then the the flight attendants are like, you have to turn off your phone. And we were wondering if Steve was going to have to get off the plane to keep talking to her anyway. So they, they actually taxied for a little bit longer and let him talk. And then they, like, you're going to have to turn your phone off. And then they, yeah. So we had, I think an hour and a half of not knowing how he was like and knowing that he'd been in a seizure for 20 minutes and not knowing if the ambulance and anyway, so they, they were great and they updated, they kept updating the pilot and they would come back and say, you're son- Oh, Liz, you broke up again. Shoot. Amazing that they were able to do that. Liz, I'm so sorry. You broke up again. So they, they updated the mom the- guilt on that episode is, is still. Oh, Liz, hold on. Your oh, your internet connection. They updated the pilot. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then they kept coming back, and then you were gone. Yeah they they kept um they just kept giving us updates on the plane. So that was that was great. That's amazing. But I, I it was so scary. Well, besides the fact that that's horrible and frightening, I'm amazed that you were able to talk them into driving an airplane around on the ground so you could keep talking, but you couldn't talk a doctor into putting him on a like a you know what I mean? Like it's such a it's ridiculous. Like she yeah. she had him at the right place. Like she I know. she did the right thing. And and I it, know and had yeah, yeah, exactly. Had they just done what she had said. I mean, she was she knew. She's like this is going to happen. And she was just sort of waiting for it to happen, but mm. Oh, it's terrible. Well, you made me sick. I'm nauseous now. Okay. So, um <laughs> I I I can't imagine like did you I don't even know what to say. Like, did you think of just like getting off the plane and like being like, we can't, we have to get off the plane or. Well, were you just I mean, yeah, he was, was, my husband was considering just staying off the plane just to, just to be able to communicate with her, you know, just, yeah. but. So when, when we had to turn our phones off, it was like, we, we knew that the ambulance was called um, mm. and it had been dispatched. So. And he was yeah. okay after that long seizure. Yeah. And he, so, yeah, because he'd had the one um, earlier, he, he'd had the one earlier. And then and based on that, because his, you know, he didn't have a CGM then, but based on the fact that he the last blood sugar reading that he had was, I don't know, like a 4.7 before the seizure. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, we better rule out that it's, it's there's nothing else going on besides the I mean, I, I was I knew it was blood sugar related, sure. those ones. But they they did the um uh the EEG just to make sure there was nothing else and it was fine. And they actually just repeated that because he'd had the the seizures in the fall when his blood sugar was not super low. And they just wanted to make sure that there was nothing else. And so they just uh they did that and it was fine. It was normal. Ha- so I think there's just something with him that he for whatever faster. reason, he can seize at a different time or a mm-hmm. different number. Has he had one since he's had a CGM? Yes. He has. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's had a, he's had a few. Like he had one right before I started looping. So we started looping in 2019, mm-hmm. and he'd had one, and that was sort of the catalyst for me starting loop. And then, um. He, I mean, he's had lots of near misses for sure, like where I've caught it in time, but I could tell like, you know, had to, yeah. had, to had I waited, he would have gone into one, but, um, and then those two in the fall and I, 
yeah, the one was he was napping in the afternoon and he'd had, he was super emotional that day. It was the day before school started and he'd had his, I'd taken his computer away, his laptop away for the summer. (laughs) And and then I gave it back to him the last day before school. And then he'd forgotten his, his code to get in. Mm -hmm. And he was, was very upset. And then I think just nervous from school. And then he'd probably, I don't know, he just slept hard and didn't, didn't feel it and didn't wake up. Wow. But Jeez. Um, why did you take the laptop away? Was it porn? Uh, no, but it was just, just <laughs> poor choices. <laughs> <laughs> was he building a bomb? list? <laughs> no. no? Okay, good. Just, All right. No. Well then nothing too bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, wow. Holy yeah. crap. I didn't know we were going here. That was, that's terrible and crazy. And, and it, it, so do you just have a different target? Do you target him more like 110 or 120 or what do you do? Yeah, I have this, his target at, uh, on loop, I have it at 5.2 to 5.5. And then I'll, I'll often use a override. That's like, I call it my pasta override where I, all the settings are the same, but it's up to a target of seven. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll throw that on if he's if he's sort of going low or eating, you know, a bunch of bread or pasta. I have hold on. So first of all, for people, five point two. Oh, it's ninety four still. Okay, so you're not targeting that high. And now you said I, I can't believe we haven't gotten to this yet. But your husband was diagnosed with type one when. Um, so miles was about, it was about 18 months after he was diagnosed. Okay. So he's, yeah. your husband's had it for 13 years or so Yeah, as well. Yeah. And he's had a yeah. seizure too. Yeah. He's had a couple as well. Like he, he had a really severe one, um, about a, a year after he was diagnosed. Um, and then he had one just last fall, like you know, after it was a couple of days after miles had had one. So I was pretty frazzled. Then. Have you, but, um, have, I want to get back to you in a second, but have you gone to a doctor and been like, hi, these are the two boys in my house that keep having seizures. Can you please figure out why? Or, <laughs> well, I mean, I think that, you know, that they, they did check, they did check miles out, like just making sure that there was no underlying, you know, I guess epilepsy or mm-hmm. something, but, um, and, you know, maybe, maybe it is the hydrocephalus. Maybe it's a sort of holdover from, I I don't know. I mean, they never said that that would be a possibility, but. Liz, I'm going to ask um, a question and you're going to take it the right way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any chance you're just bad at this? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, you know, like be, when he was young and. Well, yeah, before, then, then it's a sh- no, like that's for just sure. A, that's it a was crap so, shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so bad. And I was, yeah. he was always high and like they were happy when his A1C was, you know, eight and, you know, he, he was just high all the time. And yeah, I mean, we still have, we have lots of bad days. Like he's looping and he has all this great technology, but if he forgets to bolus for something or if his settings are a little off, I mean, he's growing so much, like he's, you know, he's like a foot taller than he was last year. Yeah, sure. And yeah, so it's it's hard. Like it's still yeah. I don't mean bad. Like, struggle. listen, I, yeah. I'm assuming now somebody's going to be mad at me. But I mean, if you listen to the podcast this long, you know what I mean. Uh, but okay. it, it's you know, like, are are our settings bad? Are we just flat out not bolusing for food and then making like crushing? You know, corrections later. Are we not? Yeah. Are we not checking at intervals? knowing that after we do these things, we really have to look in 90 minutes or we, you know, whatever the time is for you. Like, are are you just, are you not doing the things that would stop you from having these problems or are these problems just magically like overtaking you? Because you're describing what 20 years ago would have been called like a brittle diabetic. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that's a real thing. And that's where I'm stuck trying to talk to you about this. I'm not sure what to say. Like the stories are fascinating. But I mean, I'd love for you never to have a story like this again. So I'm not certain. I mean, I'm not there, obviously. But uh, like, how much does he weigh? Your son, for example. 
He's about 120 pounds. Okay. And his, he was, yeah, what's he his... was 112. Like he, he's taking Vyvanse for um, like ADD when he, so when he's in school, he takes the Vyvanse, but over the summer he doesn't. So he's gained, he's put on some weight over the summer. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I feel like I never feel like I have, like I can never, I always feel like I'm on edge because I'm like, well, this might happen. This might happen. I'm checking all the time, but. Oh, I'm yeah, amazed you haven't just walked off into the wilderness. Like I'm, I, <laughs> you're, you seem kind of amazing to me. <laughs> so I would, by now I would have been like, Hey, I gotta go. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you other three want to come. That's fine. But trombone and what's his name are staying. I'm not, I'm not taking you with me. <laughs> you know, like I get, um, it's just, it, it's a lot. And, and you're describing a situation where you must be in, like, flight or fight constantly. Yeah, I feel, I kind of feel like I am. Yeah. yeah. And with with Steve, I mean, it's he is so frustrating <laughs> because well. he's so stubborn and so old school. Like, I finally just convinced him last year to wear a CGM. And we have, co- we have great coverage. Mm-hmm. It's not the fact that we can't afford it. We have it. But he would, for the longest time, he would not wear a CGM. He was like, I'm always 4.5. I'm look, I'm always great. I don't need a CGM. Like save it for somebody who needs it. And I was like, well, you've had a seizure, you know. Um, Boys. Yeah. Yeah. And (laughs) so he, and he, you know, he, he'd had a a few scares for sure. And um, so anyway, he, I finally convinced him to, to wear one. And then he's like, oh, I guess I'm not always 4.5. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, Liz, I test twice a day and at the same exact times and I'm always yeah. 4.5. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, he did keto for about a year and a half and he was, you know, hardly taking any insulin. And, and then he told me, you know, a year after he started keto, the reason why he started keto is because he had this big scare with like we were at my parents' place and there's a little mountain behind our, our place and we were hiking up with the kids and um, Miles had had some lows on the way up. So he'd eaten all the low snacks. And then I took everybody else down and Steve decided to go out the rest of the way with, with our daughter who was six at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, he he started to feel super low at the top and he and he knew it was a bad one and he was in his mind preparing it's like how do i get my daughter down the hill after i lay down and have a seizure so he was coaching her to remember the way down you know you might i'm i'm getting pretty tired i might just need to have a rest you know can you remember the way down and you'll tell grandpa to come up with his truck and give me a ride down thinking that you know, what he would find. And so along the, along the way, there's uh blackberries at my parents' place. And so he found, he found a good patch of blackberries and just started shoveling them in his mouth. And, and he was able to get down the hill, but yeah. he didn't tell me that for about a year. <laughs> wow. And he was like, and that's the reason why I decided to do keto. Cause I, I just was, I didn't want this big spike of insulin, you know? Yeah, Liz, if you try to avoid active insulin during activity, it'll help you with lows. Like, you know this stuff, though. Like, you really do listen to the podcast, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Is it a lack of planning? Like... You mean with with our son? Well, in that scenario, like, we're going to... Oh, with with Steve? I don't know what happened with him. You know, like, and I don't manage his diabetes. Like, he's he is usually really good. Like, he is on Mm -hmm. top of it, but there's always the, you know, like maybe he'd had a big piece of my mom's pie and like gave himself too much insulin for it. And then didn't realize that he was going to go up the mountain, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm my, in my mind, I'm like, I could set you up with loop. I, you know, I have my developer's license. I could get you on, you know, I'm like, please let me do this for you. And it would take your, your mental load off, but he's too stubborn. I asked him today, I was like, can you remind me of like the top five reasons why you don't want to go on loop? <laughs> and, and he said, cause I don't want to. And cause you like, can't cause make me and you're not my yeah, mom. Were those exactly. Reasons? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is he, and is he 45 years old? <laughs> 
Yeah, he's 49. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you you named the kid after Miles Davis, right? No, 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 we didn't. Everybody always asks that, but no, we didn't. Really? It oh. was just one of the few boy names we could agree on. No kidding. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> well, listen, you have to be stubborn to play the trombone because, because, because <laughs> when you're a child and you look at it, you I mean, who looks at it and goes, all right, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's going to be that one right there. Uh, did he get stuck with it? Is it like my story where I wanted to play the cello, but they gave me a saxophone? No, I mean, he chose it. I guess he, yeah. Okay. He, he loves, really wants He it. loves it. Good. Yeah, he's well, great. He's a great player. I imagine. Yeah, I mean, people don't pay you to play music if you're uh, if you're bad at it, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it's it's got to be interesting, too, having, from his perspective, having diabetes, like being a professional musician, you know, because he's, he's ran into scenarios where he's on stage and, you know, he starts to feel drop and he's like somebody go get me a juice you know or you know mm-hmm. you, knowing you have a big solo coming up and yeah it's gotta be scary but he he is really good like he for the most part he's great he hasn't been wearing the cgm for i'd say the last two months because our insurance they were paying for it and then they're like we actually need a letter of necessity from your doctor and tell he's him to just listen been, to this podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> So he's just been lazy and not going in to get the letter from his doctor. But he's like, I do want to go back onto it because, yeah. Yeah, obviously. I, yeah. I, I don't know why. Oh, my God. All right. You fried my brain. So let's let's take a break for a second. Do something fun. Then I want to ask you how you are. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I have a website here of uh, the most famous female Canadians. And I'm stunned by the list. <laughs> So, first of all, there are people on the list who are not Canadian. So, I don't know who made this list. <laughs> and it's literally fit. But do you believe Rachel McAdams is the most famous Canadian female? No way, right? Uh, no, I mean, she, yeah, she's a she's a current famous actress, I would say. Yeah. But there's- mean Girls was a while ago. Then they have Avril Lavigne is too. Okay, mm-hmm. her time has passed, but whatever. Then we get to a couple of people. This is fascinating. The third person is from Bulgaria. Whom? And then it's and then it's it says birthplace, Bulgaria. And then she's, I guess she lives in Canada. Nina Dobrev or something like that. But 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 not the point. You can't be a famous Canadian actress if you were born in Bulgaria. You're a famous Bulgarian actress. No. Yeah, right. I agree. Okay, I agree. All right. So then Celine Dion. And Colby mm-hmm. Smolders somehow end up under the girl from Bulgaria. I don't understand that at all. This one threw me off. Shania Twain isn't from the south of a, of the United States. Yeah, I forgot that. I mean, mm-hmm. it kind of sounds vaguely familiar, but yeah. I yeah, I thought she was from the states. Catherine O'Hare, okay, I know. Sandra O oh threw me off. I didn't realize she was from Ontario. Evangeline Lilly, I knew was from Canada. Here's another made up word: Fort Saskatchewan. That can't really be a real place. Um, because I know it is, uh, <laughs> now, it, now I scroll, I scroll, I scroll. Alanis Morissette, I don't know how she should be number one. I did not realize Emily Van Camp was Canadian. Now here's the th- crazy thing. Top 20, number 16. Now number 17 is Joni Mitchell. Okay. But number 16 is a porn star. How do you think Joni Mitchell feels about this list? <laughs> Yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I just anyway, it goes not that on. There's anything wrong with being a porn star, but did Joni I Mitchell. say that? I'm saying Joni Mitchell has got to be I like know. I don't rank higher than pornography. Like, okay, I, I I don't know. I'd be thrown by this. Anyone under that, I don't know. I'd be upset. I didn't know Margaret Atwood was Canadian. That's cool. All right. Anyway, here's another one. Jennifer Tilly, birthplace, Los Angeles, California. How does this kid? Uh, you know, but she I mean? just lives in Canada. It doesn't make you. I don't buy. Listen, you got to be born in the place. Well, I guess you could get your citizenship. You know, stop it. That doesn't count. You know, it doesn't count, and I know it doesn't count. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just teasing. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, this this list is like a who's who of people you would not know. <laughs> I still think it's funny that my kids are from Winnipeg. You know, like. You it's think it's always <laughs> see, you actually think it's a, it's crazy. Yeah, it it just always yeah, it throws me for a loop sometimes because I'm like, oh yeah, my kids are Winnipeggers. 
Well, you were born in in Washington State. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are you Canadian now? Did you do the thing where you sign the paper? No, I need to get. I need to get it. I'm just. I'm just bad at doing adult things sometimes, and it just takes me a while because I'm. I guess I'm just thinking about blood sugars. Yes. So back to you. Oh, my favorite, <laughs> Hannah Simone. Do you watch New Girl? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I watched that. It was C- a great show. CC is my favorite character on New Girl, followed up by Schmidt in the early years, and then anyway. My least favorite is uh, the main character. I'm sure she doesn't oh, care what I Zoe, think. Zoe. Yeah, Zoe De Chanel. There's something about her that makes me. Is like, she Canadian? No, I'm just now oh, just okay. talking about New Girl. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we shifted off of that. Um, I I want to ask about you before we're done, okay? Because okay. you are in a in a bizarre scenario. Like, like you have three other kids on top of all this. So you're you're a working musician, like it's not a standard nine to five job, obviously. Your husband has type one and your son has type one, and they're both prone to having seizures. And I just imagine you as like a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Is that how you are? <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. I mean I you know, people say to me like, oh, I would be so stressed. And I am so stressed all the time. I feel like I probably should be in therapy and I'm not, but um, I don't know. It's, it's stressful for sure. Therapy. You should be drunk (laughs) 20 (laughs) hours a day, Liz. I don't want to, I, I'm not, I understand alcoholism is not the way to treat a problem, but you might be able to get like a some sort of a card or something like that. Seriously, I don't know that heroin's not right for you. There's um like how are you dealing in reality all the time? Well, I don't know, you actually. Don't know, do you? Um and it you know, poor poor Miles, like he has all the stuff and the other kids don't have anything. I mean, they had a little bit of um like viral induced asthma. All of them at one point needed a inhaler when they mm-hmm. get a cold. But it's not like they have to use it all the time. But he has, you know, he gets the diabetes and the severe food allergies and the thyroid. and. So you don't get to think about yourself because they have worse situations than you? Um, oh, yeah. I, I turned it away from me, didn't I? Um, yeah, I, I just, I, yeah, I guess I'm just focused focused on them and trying to keep the peace, you know, like the kids four of them they sometimes will fight and i'm just trying to keep things calm but liz you are so not asked answering my question this is very interesting (laughs) i just i don't know i don't know how to manage it really because i guess um so is the answer that you're not are you just like yeah i mean i i do feel frazzled and tired all the time you know like loop definitely helps me get more sleep than I did before. Like before I was a complete basket case, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And I do, I do feel like I joke about it, but I do feel like there I've missed, I'm missing parts of my memory because I like, I'll be having conversations with people and they bring up something that I've said before happened or people I've met. And I like literally no recollection of it. And I always feel I always feel bad when I'm talking to somebody. I'm trying desperately to remember details because I, I don't want to seem like I'm, you know, not caring about what people say. But then I feel bad if I don't remember things or no, like, I, I and literally, like, you know, that face blind, you hear people say they have face blindness where yes. they just think, yeah, I don't know if, if it's some something I have, like maybe a little bit of that or like, I'll be. I'll be, I'll meet somebody at a gathering and I'll have a full conversation with them and I'll be talking to them. For, I mean, it could be half an hour or an hour. And then if I meet them, I, I don't know, I meet them six months later and I have, I would be like, Oh, hi, I, how are you? You know, like what <laughs> nice to meet you. Like, they're like, well, we've had, we've talked. <laughs> do you really think, is it, is it possible you have that? How do they, Diagnose. It's called. Yeah, I, it's I called just feel like I'm sleep pag- deprived. Oh, okay. So you just exhausted. I think so. I think so. So, do you? How much do you sleep? Um. Well, I don't know. I mean, I I try to go. I 
usually tend to fall asleep around midnight, but then, cause I like to sort of see what's happening, like what his last snack is going to do or whatever. And then, mm-hmm. or I'll hear him up at midnight and I'm like, Oh, he's going to eat something. So I have to sort of be on extra alert. Um, and then I, you know, I have my alarms and alerts. So Liz, I'm stalking you online right now. Here's something. I wake up and check it a couple times a night. Oh, okay. Hold on. You, 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 you blipped out at this, the craziest moment. So I didn't hear. Oh, any, sorry. No. <laughs> Wait, do you hear what I said? So, um, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you I think it's these headphones. No, no, it's not. It's your internet connection. I get a, I get a signal okay. when your internet connection gets bad, but, um, so you're staying up later at night, checking on them. And then I didn't kind of get the rest of it. Oh yeah. I just, I think I have trained myself to, even if, even if I think he's going to be steady, I just train myself to wake up and check it anyway. Mm-hmm. So I check it a few times and it's great. You know, I have, I have the so, loop on, I charge his watch next yeah. to me. So if I have to give him insulin or put an override on, I can do that from my bed. I don't have to get up. Right. But you're getting I, a lot of broken sleep. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Very bad for you. Okay. So what I was going to say is what I did say when you couldn't hear me, which was why it felt creepy is that I'm stalking you online at the moment. And oh. <laughs> so you're, you're a thin person. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when you were married, you were thin, but not that thin. Uh, not mm-hmm. as thin as you are now. So are you like, Liz, it's I okay. I've we, always been thin. But... You have. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just a photo. Yeah. Um, look at, you're like, oh, I looked fat at my wedding. Great. Is that what yeah. you're saying? It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> you looked more like a youthful, like, um, I don't know what to say. Yeah. You're adorable. Um, the, by bi- the, way. the bitterness wasn't there. The... <laughs> What you're not seeing, Scott, is a burning <laughs> hatred of life. <laughs> okay. uh, Sorry, hold on a second. <laughs> now we're getting to it, Liz. Um, so, um, are you? So, I was just going to say, are you naturally like lean, or are you out of your mind thin? Do you know what I mean by the two things? Yeah. yeah. No, I. Yeah, I I feel like I'm just not like. Yeah, naturally lean. Okay, because there's a thing that happens, like 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 there are some yeah yeah. stressed out people are sometimes either really thin or heavy, like they go in one way or the other, right? Like they eat a lot because of the stress, or they don't eat anything because of the stress. Right. But you would. Well, I've start. I started taking. um, I have like chronic migraines and stuff, so I've been taking um, this medication for the last little while and they've, they've upped it. I didn't notice anything for the first nine months when I was taking it. And one of the side effects is weight gain, but I didn't notice anything until they just upped my dose recently. And I have, I think gained about six pounds. Oh, okay. But, well, what does that make you? 91 pounds? I mean, like, yeah, like I'm, yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're not going to get any compassion out of me on that one list. <laughs> Okay. If I lost six pounds, you'd look at me and go, Scott looks exactly the same. <laughs> so, um, but, but I, okay. So being like being serious, if I can be, I don't know. Cause you mm-hmm. really cracked me up with the bitterness statement. <laughs> I just, like, that's amazing. Um, you, you're, are you not okay, but you're just telling yourself you're okay. Like, are you willing yourself to go on or, or do you actually think like, is there, is there going to be a moment in your life when you look back and go, I wish I would have m- taking care of myself differently? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, yeah, some days I feel like that for sure. Other days I feel fine and I'm just sort of, you know, going along, things are fine. And then other days I feel like, yeah, super stressed out. But hmm. Any- I don't know. I mean, my, my job is like, our job is kind of stressful as well. Like I, you know, we're not working right now, but we'll start back up again in September. And it's, it's kind of a high stress situation, you know, like preparing music that has to be, you know, at Perfect. a concert level. And yeah. and then doing it how many times a day w- once you're working? Um, yeah, it depends on what, what kind of uh, concert we're doing, but yeah, we'll have, we'll have a few rehearsals and then the concert and then probably, um, yeah, sometimes it's like two programs a week, like okay. different music that we have to prepare. Can you enjoy it playing the music or does it feel like work? Yes and no. I mean, I feel I'm I'm always in pain when I play. I mean, I there might be something 
I feel like there might be something going on with me and I, I just haven't figured it out. Like I'm in constant pain when I play. Um, so I don't enjoy it as much as I know I would if I wasn't in pain. How? In your joints? Muscles? Yeah, my my joints and muscles. My Like I have, I'm, <laughs> I have one leg that's, I have one leg that's a little bit longer than the other one. And then I have a little bit of scoliosis as well. So I feel like I'm, and then playing violin is so, you know, it's not very kind of contorted. It's all, yeah, yeah. it's all crooked. Like you're overdeveloping and using anyway. So I, I probably, yeah, it's probably just a, a posture and muscle thing. But I, even if I take, say I take three months off or two months off, which doesn't happen very often, but if I, t- you know, pain almost you know it's it it's more when i play but so when you take time off because you blipped out for a second when you take time off the pain kind of lessens uh a little bit but it's still there it's still there i've i've never like it's very infrequently that i think this but you should probably smoke weed like i probably should yeah, yeah of all the people i've talked to in the last 30 days i'm putting you at the top of my canadian not canadian ladies who should smoke weed list um yeah so and and to, you've gotten me so relaxed now i like you so much that when you said i have one leg longer than the other and i, and I, <laughs> I, and I have I scoli- like he's gonna make so much fun of me and i have scoliosis i thought to say braggart because <laughs> <And I, laughs> my like my real sarcasm is like it's bubbling to the top now. Like I, I, I give you guys like 8% of my sarcasm because I don't even believe you would like me if you heard it all. <laughs> so I just have incredibly <laughs> sarcastic thoughts all the time, which I then distill down and try to turn into thoughts while I'm talking on the podcast. Um, but yeah. yeah, I was just like, Oh, listen to her bragging. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, a real catch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I'm worried for you. I know. Yeah, that I don't that's know. Not... Like, part of me thinks I'm like maybe I have fibromyalgia because I'm always tired and I'm always sore. And like, well, I would look at your thyroid like... first about that. Yeah. Right. I mean, especially if your son has hypothyroidism and there's autoimmune in your family. Um, I know your husband has type one, and so does your, and so does your son. But that doesn't mean that it can't be something on your end. It also, you know, you're so used to looking for people being sick. Because of your scenario, I find myself in this sometimes. Like something happens in the house, and I'm like, that's probably definitely a rare type of blah, blah, blah. Because you're just used to things like that happening. And then sometimes it's like, oh no, that's not it. I just have a cold. Like, you you know, like, and so, I mean, like, because you're like, I might have fibromyalgia. You also might have scoliosis and just be uncomfortable because you're contorting yourself playing a violin, right? So, um, and you're getting older and you're under a ton of stress and you're not sleeping. Right. So I don't know what would happen if you just like took off four days and slept. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> Can you try it? Uh, no, I think I would. I would just. I would get more stressed out. Just I. I'm gonna giving all the control over. You know, like I would. I would be worried that something oh, would happen Liz, with my hold ulcer. On, hold I on. know. Is there a control thing going on? Well, no. I mean. Yeah, I realized that how that sounded. I mean, maybe like you realize how it sounded. It sounded like what you said. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it I sounds mean, like you were being I very just, honest for a second. And you don't want yeah. the control of no, no, no. your family's safety to be out of your hands. Yeah, I I feel like it would just stress me out, giving all the all the burden to Steve to to handle. And then, you know, after, after that thing that happened when he was six, when we went to auto, we for sure could, I mean, Steve would love to go away, just the two of us, but I was like, that's never going to happen again. (laughs) Well, it will, it will someday. Yeah. I don't know. So we're actually, we're waiting to hear any day. We should hear if he's going to be approved for a alert dog. So your son or your husband? uh, My, our son. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we started the process uh, three years ago before COVID, and then it's just sort of, sort of finally wrapping up now to see if if he gets it. But yeah, so listen, you need propofol. 
that you remember the Jackson juice they put Michael Jackson to sleep with. Um, that's what you need. You need to go night night for like a while. Like I, I know this is not legal, but <laughs> it's yeah. you need well, a, you need anesthesia. You need to be put. I, be, put I know. <laughs> a couple years ago, I did, I needed surgery. It was like. Uh, best day of your life yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) i had like a hernia like you know leftover stuff from like muscles separating from the birth and stuff and um i was joking with the nurse after i was like can you just can you give me extra so i stay asleep for a long time because i never get to sleep at home (laughs) no kidding i i mean they actually did did they really yeah they're like yeah we felt sorry for you so because i (laughs) left you out a little longer yeah, I was like at one point I was like, you know, I had woken up and and uh, I was like, so what what sort of time? And they'd left me there. I was there all day sleeping, like kind of just come pick me up. And they're like, Oh, you can go home anytime. We just, you know, we just wanted you to have a rest. Liz, let me tell you, you've painted a picture today of a healthcare system in shambles in Canada. Um, you, you've, you, uh, by the way, if you ever get divorced, there's no way anyone who hears this is going to marry you. So you're not going to be able to get remarried. She's got one leg longer. She's super stressed out. I'm waiting. She doesn't remember. I'm waiting for when you're like, my vagina is actually on my thigh. I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's sort of like midway between my knee and my hip. It's uh, sort of on the outside. I don't know why it's there. Um, You know, like you, but, but still I'm more focused on you not sleeping. Yeah. Well, I I mean, it it is a big deal. It is for sure better with loop, but yeah, I, it is, it's just hard, you know, like the, the, the last time that Steve had a seizure, it was in the middle of the night and that time, I mean, I still, I feel guilty about that because he was actually high. He was wearing a CGM at that point and he was super high before bed and he had, he had given, can you hear me? Oh yeah. I'm listening. To oh, word. sorry. Um, he had given himself a big correction and, or I just figured a normal correction actually, but I had told myself, I was like, I'm going to be hearing his high alarm for the next couple hours. And I, psych myself I'm like don't listen to the I was telling myself don't listen to the alarms it's just his high alarms Mm -hmm. because I (laughs) was trying to you know just tune it out and then it was actually his low alarm was going off and I wasn't listening to it because I in my my brain had switched it around thinking that he was just high any people in your life pass away that you feel any kind of attachment to no, I mean I've had I've lost grand, but I haven't nothing uh, like the, the no, I haven't had any okay. sort of um, tragic losses like that. Yeah, your guilt is like but, is 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 um I understand it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I get where it comes from, and I understand why you have it, and I understand why you're worried, and why you feel like you can't sleep. But it's so untenable. You know, like, is there any way you could talk yourself into it that way? Like you're not going to be around as long as you want to be for these people. I mean, not to say you'd be dead, but you might be so like useless was the word I was going to is like, you might just, you might sap yourself down to the point where you can't be helpful to them. And then that's going to make you feel bad. Like you're going to have to like do something for yourself in the now to get to the later. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, for sure. Liz, this went in so many directions. You didn't expect this, I imagine? Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I knew, yeah. I I guess I was nervous about, you know, making sure that it was, I had something of value to say, you know. Well, you definitely did. (laughs) Um, Yeah, because I I get so much out of the podcast. And if it's, even if it's something that is not, relate not related at all to my situation Mm -hmm. there's always some sort of nugget in there that's helpful but um well that's great i'm glad i i uh, this is my favorite part of the podcast when somebody says something nice about me so i didn't want i didn't want to talk over you while you were talking (laughs) (laughs) like keep going keep going i was like (laughs) and and what else did i do (laughs) with yeah no i i really i love i wish i you know, I'm so happy when I hear people that find you and the group and the podcast, you know, like even when they're in the hospital, you know, yeah. um, or within the first couple months or the first year even, or it's just, I, 
I so wish that I could have had what you, what you provide to people when he was first diagnosed, because I feel like it would have, things would have been so different. And I mean, he's, he's doing great now. Like he has, um, you know, he has his ups and downs and roller coaster days, but, um, like he, he's not having tons of lows right now. He's at like 1% lows. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's, his last two A1Cs were like 5.7 and 5.9. So, and he's been in the sixes for a, for a long time, but um, yeah, there were definitely like years when I just didn't know having a A1C of eight was a bad thing, yeah. you know? Um, Liz, Liz, here's what I want for you. And I, I hope you listen. Yeah, set everybody's um, target at 120 and like on a Friday afternoon, disappear into a room with like blinds that go dark and just like sleep the weekend away and, and just try to get yourself like rested and take five minutes to go to the doctor and get yourself a, you know, a checkup, have them run some blood work, tell them everything that you've been feeling, see if they can find out something simple. Tell them your kid has hypothyroidism. You want your, your, your thyroid levels checked Get your iron checked. Like, do all those little things that, you know, we don't do for ourselves. Um, Mm -hmm. You could be tired from, I mean, you're a a menstruating age woman. You could could have low iron. Uh, You could have uh, hypothyroidism yourself. You might not. Um, There are just some simple things you could do to help yourself. Like, I just feel like you're, you're existing and you're not taking care of yourself at all. Yeah, if I'm, yeah. Am I right? There's or am I... Yeah, there's definitely truth in there, and um, yeah, yeah, you're right. I yeah, just take that. just take a weekend. Like, look at them and go. Yeah. I am trusting the two of you not to kill yourselves or each other. And by the way, take care of these other three. Actually, if I was you, I'd put the other three in charge of those two. But I mean, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, and um, <laughs> and that your husband and your son, they're very much alike. The type ones. Yes. Yeah. They're, and they, and they, and you disappeared, Liz. And I think probably they're both too stubborn to admit that. Gotcha. Okay. So they even look alike, don't they? Oh, sorry. You just cut out for a sec. Oh, actually you cut out, but now I'm back. Yeah. No, no. So I asked if they were alike, you said, they're yeah. both too, both stubborn, and I was, yeah. and I just said they kind of look alike too, don't they? Um, kind of. I mean, yeah. yeah. All the boys, all the boys have red hair, like various shades of red hair. Okay. And Steve has like dark. I say it's black. He says it's brown. But okay. um, well, it's a lovely family you have. I would like you to get some sleep so you can see it and remember their faces <laughs> a couple weeks later. <laughs> Do you ever forget the kids' names? Yeah. Oh, I, all the time. I mean, I know their names, but I always start all of, you know, if I'm saying, if I'm trying to say Felix, I'll, I'll go through the first syllables of everybody else's name. So it's like, we have Miles, Felix, Hazel, and Quincy. So I'll be like, Hey, my Felix or fee, my Hazel. <laughs> yeah. Liz, are you and your husband about the same age? Uh, he's four years older. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you're too young to not remember everybody's name. You're exhausted. Yeah. And yeah. you don't know it. Oh, I do know it. No, but I mean, like, you don't know it enough to be like, I have to stop. You like, you're like, I'm exhausted, but look at me, I'm doing it. You, you know what I mean? Like, I used to be like that. I used to have that, like, oh, I'm handling this. Like, I'm handling sleeping four hours a night. I, I was not handling it. I just lied to myself and told myself I was. So, I don't know. Just please take care of yourself. We're never going to talk after this, Liz. So I'm going to worry about you. I'm going to be like this right now. I feel like I'm on the plane and they're telling me we're going to take off. And I'm like, I got to shut my phone off and I'm not going to find out if Liz is okay. (laughs) Seriously. I mean, I'm worried. I'm not, I I know it's, I I don't want you to feel bad because we've only known each other for an hour and a half. And my takeaway is Liz is going to die and I got to do something. But um, I really want you to do something for yourself. I hope you do. Oh, thanks. That's nice. Well, maybe, maybe in a year or something, Steve will come on the podcast. And by that time, he'll be able to report that he's looping 
and he's wearing a CGM and uh, I'm sleeping. Yeah. Well, that would be, that would be lovely. And I'd like to hear that story about him walking up the hill because that almost made me cry when you were talking about that. Yeah. I think that's why he didn't tell me for so long because he, it had really scared him. Yeah. No but, kidding. I would imagine. All right. Well, I appreciate this. I'm sorry. I kept you much longer than I said I was going to, but thank oh, you. Oh, that's very okay. Much. No, thank you for letting me ramble on. Sorry. Oh, um, you didn't ramble. You were good. Okay. Don't worry. You were very good. I have an episode um, that I, anyway, I'll tell you, let's stop and I'll tell you in a second. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G-V-O-K-E-G-L-U-C-A-G-O-N. Dot com forward slash juice box. I also want to thank Cozy Earth and remind you that you can get 35% off at CozyEarth.com with the offer code juicebox at checkout. And of course, US Med, USMed.com forward slash juice box or call 888 721 1514. Arden gets her Dexcom and Omnipod supplies from US Med. You could too. They also have Tandem and Libre, and go check them out. I want to thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and follow in an audio app like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, anywhere where you get your audio. Find the show, hit subscribe or follow. Depends. Some apps ask you to subscribe. Some say follow. Whichever yours says, that's what you do.